In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at how Redis handles transactions and how you can use them to improve your application's performance and data consistency. We'll be showing you how to use the multi, exact, discard, and watch commands and providing examples of how to use them in your own projects. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. Redis is an in-memory database that is widely used for caching, real-time analytics, and message brokering. One of the key features of Redis is its support for transactions, which allows it to execute a series of commands as a single unit of work. This ensures that either all of the commands are completed or none of them are, which is useful for maintaining the consistency of your data. Transactions in a nutshell. To start a transaction in Redis, you use the multi command. This tells Redis to start recording the commands that will be part of the transaction. You can then issue any number of commands, such as set and get. And then these commands are queued up, but are not actually executed until we issue the exact command. If you want to cancel the transaction, you can use the discard command that will discard all the commands that have been queued up so far. It is important to know that while the commands are being queued up, they are not actually being executed. This means that other clients will not be able to see any of the changes being made as part of the transaction. Besides that, a request sent by another client will never be served in the middle of the execution of a Redis transaction. This guarantees that the commands are executed as a single isolated operation. One of the benefits of using transactions in Redis is that they are atomic. This means that either all of the commands in the transaction are completed or none of them are. This is useful for ensuring the consistency of your data, as it ensures that you don't end up in a situation where some of the commands in the transaction have been completed, but others have not. Another benefit of transactions in Redis is that they are fast. Because Redis is an in-memory database, it is able to execute transactions very quickly. This makes it ideal for use cases where you need to make multiple changes to your data in a short period of time. And what about optimistic locking? To benefit from optimistic locking, a watch command can be issued. When a client issues a watch command for a given key, Redis flags the key as being watched by the client. If a different client modifies the key before the original client issues an exact command, the exact will return nil, and the transaction will not be executed. This allows the clients to ensure that the data they are operating on has not been modified by another client since they began that transaction. And what about rollbacks? A rollback is the process of undoing changes made to the data, usually by restoring the data to its previous state. In the case of a database, it involves undoing any writes or updates made to the data during a transaction and restoring the data to the state before the transaction began. In Redis, since the commands are not executed until the exact command is issued, nothing is written to the database until the transaction is fully executed, so there is nothing to undo. The discard command discards the commands that were queued up and doesn't affect the state of the data. Thus, it's not considered a rollback. Now, let's get our hands dirty. All right, everybody. So as you saw, I moved to a new house. I still haven't set up my, my studio here and the uh, chroma key is not working properly, but that's what I have for today. Yeah, so let's get our hands dirty. And as you can see, I already have my Redis server and Redis Inside running locally. If you still don't know how to run your Redis server and Redis Inside locally using Docker, I have a video where I explain how you can do it. Don't forget to check it out. If you already have everything set up, let's get it started. So here, I already have my Redis Inside opened up. You can see that my Redis server is empty, right? No keys to display. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is creating two accounts and transferring money from account one to account two within a transaction. So let's see how we can do it, right? So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to set account one, let's say with the 1000 monies. Okay. And then set account two with 2000 monies. Okay. So if I come back here to the browser, and refresh it, you see that we have our two accounts here, right? If I come here, I can even edit this um, key value and change the value, right? But let's go back here and now let's try to create a transaction. So let's say that I do a multi, right? To start to start a transaction. And then within this transaction, I'm gonna change set account one or better, decree z by 
account one, let's say 100 monies, right? I'm taking money from account one and I'm gonna put money back in account two, right? I'm transferring 100 monies from the first account into the second account. Okay, so you can see that it, this command was queued. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase by account two 100 monies as well, right? Okay, cute as well. And now if I do exact, okay, you can see that the first account now has 900 monies and the second one has 2100 monies. All right, so you can see that these two operations, they happened within the transaction, right? Guaranteeing that it was an isolated operation, right? Okay, but now let's try something different. Let's simulate a real world application. Let's pretend that I'm a process that is transferring money between two accounts, right? And the first thing that I'd like to do is actually check if the accounts, they have the money to make this transfer. And the transfer that we're gonna make right now is of 900 monies, right? So I'm gonna transfer 900 from the first account into the second account. And the first thing that you should do is checking if the first account has the value. You don't want the account to have a negative value afterwards. So let's get account one. And you can see that inside this account, it has 900 monies. But what if before I start my transaction in this milliseconds that happened with, uh, within an application, another process gets into this account and takes money out of it, right? What would happen is that in the end you would still have inconsistency in your data and in order to solve this problem what you need is optimistic locking right and the way you can benefit from optimistic locking in redis is by using the watch command so before we start our transaction what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch account one okay and now i'm gonna get account one again Nice, 900. And now I'm gonna start my transaction. Okay. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna decrease by account one, 900, and increase by account two, 900. Okay. And now I'm gonna issue the exact command. But before I do it, let's pretend that another process came in the way. Let's come here in the browser. You can see that this is still 900. So let's pretend that I'm another process. I came here and I took 100 monies from this account. So let's come back here and now let's run the exact. So another process took money from this account while I was doing this operation. I was watching this key. I started the transaction. I decreased money from this transaction, not yet because the the command is queued and during this process another process came and took 100 monies from this account so let's execute this now and see what happens okay it returns nil why it returns nil because i was watching the key and redis saw that this key was modified by another process and therefore he said okay i'm not gonna execute this transaction because this key was modified by another process and the data is inconsistent now. Okay, we see that it's working fine and that's how you make use of optimistic locking in Redis, right? What about the discard command now? So let's say that you start a transaction, right? But before, let's come here, let's check our keys. Okay, account one, it has 800 and account two, it has 200, sorry, 2100. Okay, so let's start our transaction. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease by decrease by account two, let's say 200 now. Okay, it's Q, right? But let's say that for any reason I did some, some something else here, checked something else, and I decided that I don't want to um, perform this transaction anymore. What can I do? I can issue then the discard command and this should uh, discard the commands that were queued and nothing should have changed it in my, in my values, right? They are still 800 and 2100. This can be useful when you want to discard this transaction and start a new one or when you reach some condition that uh, makes you drop that transaction and not perform any operation anymore. 
Okay, and that's what I have for you today. We went through the basic commands to benefit from Redis transactions. So we saw how to benefit from optimistic locking with the watch command. We saw how to start a transaction with the multi command. We saw how to discard queued up commands using the discard command. And finally, we saw how to execute all the, queue, the queued up commands by issuing the exact command. So let's jump to the conclusions now. In summary, transactions in Redis are a powerful tool that allows you to execute a series of commands as a single unit of work, ensuring the consistency of your data and providing fast performance. My name is Rafael Delio. If you like this kind of videos, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button down below. See you around.